Hello and welcome to episode 12 of your Leader Breeder podcast with myself and your host, Aidan Jeffrey. Leader Breeder podcast is a leadership podcast dedicated to helping you discover and develop your leadership voice in order to deliver greater value in your life, career, ministry, and business. And in today's episode, episode 12, we're going to have a look at are you a market leader or a market bleeder? Interesting subject we are going to cover today and I'm super excited to be with you in our monthly Leader Breeder podcast. But before we get into today's episode, another reminder again of the many resource platforms available to you to access, including our free Prosper Clock app. We've had a few glitches along the way, push and pulls, getting the thing working properly. We've had a few audio challenges and glitches as is anything that is new and uh, anything that is launching out there in the marketplace. And so we've been correcting that and we're pleased to announce that we've had several updates done on the Prosper Clock app on the Apple iOS store and on the Google Play store. So please do yourself a favor and go to either of the stores and download the free Prosper Clock app. Remember, the purpose of the app is simply to help you to start to declare declarations, starting to renew the condition of your mind. And as you go and you start to take that app and you start to record, you can record onto the clock app. It's a normal clock app, alarm app. It's got stopwatches and all the normal stuff, but with an addition of a recording feature, which you then can record into it, positive declarations, either from for your business, for your career, for your from the word of God, whichever you choose to do. And when you set that as a ringtone, every time your alarm goes off, you hear yourself declaring into your future. Because either a man thinks he can or he can't, Henry Ford said, in either way, you are right. The word of God says in Proverbs 23, 7, for as a man or woman think on the inside, so are they on the outside. So come on, go and get yourself a free copy or a free download of the Prosper Clock app and you are going to start to see incredible changes in your life. So come on, let's get straight into episode 12 of our Leader Breeder podcast this month. Are you a market leader or are you a market bleeder? I'll see you on the other side of this. Well, episode 12 of our monthly podcast, are you a market leader or a market bleeder? I've been sharing this message with a few of our businessmen in the church, and I just felt that this month I want to speak to us and challenge us, those of you that haven't heard this before from other cities around the the country or other nations of the world. I'm noticing people are listening from all over the world, and thank you so much for taking the time to invest in yourself. And this month I want to speak to us, market leader or market bleeder. 1 Chronicles 12, 32, the Bible says in the New King James Version, the sons of Issachar, who had understanding of the times to know what Israel ought to do, their chiefs were 200 and all their brethren were at their command. Context of the scripture verse is David is a Ziklag, King David, and he's lost all his support, lost everything at Ziklag. He was stripped of everything he had and the tribes of Israel come and rally around him to come and support him. And the one particular tribe, the, the tribe of Issachar, the sons of Issachar, the Bible says that when they came to David, they had an understanding of the times and they knew what to do. You see, there are two kinds of business owners. When we come take that across into the business world, there are two kinds of business owners or businesses in the marketplace, those that are leading or those that are bleeding. In other words, those that have an understanding of the times and know what to do, or those that don't have an understanding of the times and are not sure what to do. And that must be a very, and is a very frustrating place to be because when you don't know what to do, it's a very difficult place to be. And so the Bible says that the sons of Issachar, and I want to speak over your life today and say to you, I'm believing that as we go through this podcast and as you are refreshed and challenged in this episode this month, that you will be encouraged to know that as you trust in the wisdom of the Holy Spirit, He's going to give you an understanding of the times and to know what to do. So either you have an understanding of the times and you know what to do, or you don't. Either you are leading, because when you a leader in the marketplace knows what to do, has an understanding, or you are bleeding. You either are hemorrhaging. So when I speak about bleeding, I'm speaking about hemorrhaging. And we know that when someone hemorrhages or a person hemorrhages, you're actually going to bleed out and end up in death. You see, to hemorrhage, the dictionary says, means to lose or expend large amounts of something valuable in seemingly uncontrollable way. So, an example, the business was hemorrhaging cash or the business was hemorrhaging customers, whatever it may be. speaks of 
a loss. It's bleeding out. It's, it's busy dying out. And the only reason why something would bleed or hemorrhage is because we don't know how to stop it. And so the only reason why a business would hemorrhage or a church would hemorrhage or a person's life or finances or marriage or whatever it is might be hemorrhaging is because we're not sure what to do. We haven't got enough information, enough wisdom, enough guidance, enough counsel. And that must be a very frustrating place to be and is a very frustrating place to be. I mean, you might be asking me or thinking, so do you always know what to do? No, I don't always know what to do. That's why it's critical that we understand that as we are children of God, as you are a, a leader in the marketplace, that you have an understanding of the times and you know what to do. So my question to us as we step out on this episode, episode 12, where would you plot yourself or your business at the moment, your career, your life? Where would you plot it at the moment? Are you a market leader or are you a market bleeder? Are you finding that you are going backwards, you're running at loss, you are, like I said, hemorrhaging, regressing, moving backwards, you may be hitting panic stages, panic phases, you may be having a sort of visions of closing down or maybe you feel you want to run away or you just want to avoid your reality. Not wrong to absolutely think like that at times, but I want to take this time in this episode to challenge you, encourage you to really just deposit into your spirit to say to you that this is the acceptable year of the Lord. This is the, your greatest year yet. And as you listen to what I'm going to speak about in the rest of this episode, I want you to be encouraged to know that you are going to gain ground. You are going to make up for lost time. You are going to recover all. Why? Because the Bible says David recovered all. And we know that he had initially he'd lost all, but because the sons of Issachar, counselors, mentors, came around him and encouraged him and told and because they knew what to do, they could give David advice. And based on that advice and the wisdom that they had, he was able to plot a new course and come out the other side victorious. So the good news today is, as you listen to this, is that you don't have to allow yourself, your life, your business, your career to bleed to death. You can do something about it. You see, the Bible says, like I said earlier, the sons of Issachar, they understood the times. And as a result of the understanding of the times, they knew what to do. So how do we then get an understanding of the times? If we're talking about they had an understanding of the times. Now, I mean, it goes without saying that we are living in extremely interesting times on the planet right now, in our nation, in the countries around the world, economically, politically, biblically, scripturally, prophetically. There are so many things happening simultaneously and sadly social media or the media often doesn't help with that as people are always sending bad news out there but at the same time social media is, is also informing us of what's going on and so it's not a time to fear it's not a time to draw back it's not a time to regress it's not a time to pack up and leave or pack up and emigrate or whatever it is or to shut the business doors down or to scale down no i want to say to you clearly today that it is a time for you to really get excited. It's a time for you to wise up so that you can rise up. You see, Proverbs 1 verse 5 in the Amplified Version, the Bible says, The wise will hear and increase their learning, and the person of understanding will acquire wise counsel and the skill to steer his course wisely and lead others to the truth. Let me read that to you again. The wise, Proverbs 1 verse 5, will hear and increase their learning, and the person of understanding will acquire wise counsel and the skill to steer his or her course wisely and lead the others to truth. So we're talking about the sons of Issachar had the understanding of the times and they knew what to do. And Solomon says in Proverbs that the wise will hear and increase their learning and the person of understanding. They had an understanding of the times, the sons of Issachar. And Solomon says you can get an understanding of the times if you will hear and increase your learning regarding what's happening around you, not being oblivious to what's happening around you. So the first thing I want to look at today is, are you acquiring wise counsel? Because the, the Bible says that the wise will hear and they, they will increase their learning and the person of understanding will acquire wise counsel. So we can acquire wise counsel in two ways. We can acquire wise counsel through mentors and through books. Now, I'm sure we can acquire, acquire wise counsel through many ways. I want to focus on two particular ways in this episode, mentors and books. Well, firstly, we have a spiritual mentor in the Holy Spirit, someone who is a guide, the parakletos, a helper. But Jesus said if he did not go away, he couldn't send us the helper, the Holy Spirit. And so John 16 verse 13 in the Amplified Version, the Bible says, but when he, the spirit of truth comes, 
He will guide you into all truth, full and complete truth. For he will not speak on his own initiative, but he will speak whatever he hears from the Father and the message regarding the Son. And he will disclose to you what is to come in the future. That's so encouraging. If you are a spiritual Christian, you have a spiritual mentor, a spiritual guide in the person of the Holy Spirit. And listen to what the Bible says. The Bible says that he will disclose to you what is to come in the future. Think about that for a moment. The sons of Issachar didn't have the Holy Spirit. They had to rely on Old Testament, the law of Moses. They had to rely on the prophetic prophets to tell them what to do, the high priests, the Levites. They had to work through many things from from a spiritual perspective. But from a physical or a business or an economic perspective, there's many ways in which we can navigate our way through our careers or our businesses. But you have an unfair advantage if you have the Holy Spirit in you also. Because the Bible said not only will he speak whatever he hears from the Father, the message regarding the Son, not only will he reveal more of Christ to you, Jesus' nature, Christ's plan and purpose for your life, but also he will disclose to you what is to come in the future. That is so reassuring. That is so encouraging. So the Bible says if you lack wisdom, ask of the Holy Spirit. Ask him to guide you. Ask him. If you're not sure, say to him, Holy Spirit, what must I do? Where must I go? Who must I phone? What is my next move? Can you guide me? Can you lead me? So I want to encourage you, make use of the, the spiritual mentor, if I could put it in a business sense, that is available to you in the, in the person of the Holy Spirit. So the second way in which we can acquire wise counsel is we have business mentors, someone who has walked the way and can show the way. They don't just speak from theory or from head knowledge. They've actually got some scars on them, some life skill They actually have gone through the mill in some areas of their life. And Paul the Apostle writes in Philippians 4 verse 9, he says what? He says, the things which you learned and received and heard and saw in me, these things do, and the God of peace will be with you. So notice he's talking to the church in Philippi, and he says, the things which you learned and received and heard and saw in me. So he was saying, when I mentored you, when I led you, when I I guided you, he says, These things do. So he says, watch my life, imitate my life as I imitate Christ, but watch me. I'm not afraid to say, watch me. So who are some mentors in your life that that you could say are people you can look to, aspire to be like, or learn from, or gain knowledge from? And here's a small little tip that I learned many years ago from a mentor of mine in Peter Daniels when it was my business mentor years ago. He always said that you can learn from mentors, you can know mentors, you can actually have a relationship with someone without them actually having a relationship with you. In other words, when you read a book, when you take someone's life, the author of a book, and you read that person's book, you actually are getting to know the person, you're developing a relationship with that person without that person even having to know you. And that's the power of seeking, knocking, and asking when it comes to acquiring wise counsel or gaining understanding or learning. Because remember our scripture verse in Proverbs chapter 1, the wise will hear and increase their learning and the person of understanding will acquire wise counsel. So I want to really encourage you, if you don't have a person that you can actually say, I've learned from this person or I've learned from that person or I can pick up this book or this book taught me this or this book taught me that. And when Peter Daniels made that statement years ago, I realized that that person doesn't need to know me personally, but I can know that person. I can learn and glean from that person. And now we know, I mean, books, uh, YouTube, internet, there's so many information access points, and yet the more information there is, it seems as if the less people know. It's because we don't have a mentor or someone that is able to guide us. And I often share the story of Peter Daniels, who you might have heard me say it before, it's just my story, my my journey, where he spoke about the fact that when he was in, in grade one, his grade one teacher, Miss Phillips, rattled him on his jaw and told him, Peter Daniels, you'll never amount to anything. And so he became a rebellious young man, went through life, always angry, fighting, never took the responsibility for his life and avoided everything. And by the age of 26, he couldn't read or write. And when I encountered this man, he was 73, he owned three banks and he was a billionaire. And so that resonated with me because I was in business at the time, going through a very difficult time. And I always say I had a cash flow problem. I had more cash flowing out than flowing in. And I was so broke, I couldn't even pay attention. I was so broke that when I walked past the bank, the alarm would go off. And my kids always say, Dad, why do you always tell that joke? Because I think it's very funny. 
So that's why I tell the joke, because it's true when you know when you got your back against the wall, you're not too sure. It's not funny at the time, but today when I look back, I go, gee, you know, I don't want to go back to those days. But at the time when I'm there, that's how broke I was. So you look at people's lives now. Or when I met Peter Daniels and I saw his life, and the it's easy to look and say, wow, the guy's a billionaire, owns three banks. But what resonated with me was he was 26 when he started out and he couldn't even read or write. He was illiterate. So I say to you, it's never too late to start and it's, it's never too late for God to give you a breakthrough wherever you, whatever age you might be listening to this today. I mean, Colonel Sanders only started KFC at 68. So some are late starters, late bloomers, whatever it might be. But I want to say to you today that never ever doubt your ability still to walk through that valley of the shadow of death and come out the other side. You are able, because why? The Bible says in Ephesians 3.20, now to him who is able. And Christ is in us. Christ is our message. Christ is with us. The Holy Spirit is in us. And so we have an unfair advantage. So don't ever doubt yourself from a spiritual perspective. But we have to add to our spiritual natural. We have to go and get a mentor. Find out from someone who's been ahead of you. So I started to read all of Peter Daniel's books. And that book that I referred to earlier, Miss Phillips, You Were Wrong, because he was sitting outside of the school where Miss Phillips told him he would never amount to anything. Those words resonated in his heart, and he took them to heart, and he actually thought about those, and eventually that's what he became. He became a loser. He doubted himself. He took the words of the labels of other people and believed them, like the 12 spies that were sent into the promised land to go and spy out the land of promise. And 10 of them came back and said the giants were so big, took two men to carry grapes, and they magnified the fear. They magnified the problem. While two, Joshua and Caleb, came back and said, hey, the grapes are so big, you know how many wine farms we can start? Do you know how many businesses we can start? Do you know how many opportunities there are? And so perspective is always everything. And if you have a negative perspective, you're going to have a negative outlook on your life. And so sometimes pressure, sometimes not knowing what to do, sometimes frustration, sometimes that place of fear where you look at your bank balance, you look at your, your customer base, you look at your last month's turnover, you look at your, your options and you go, this is just going downhill from here. But I say to you again today, God wants you to be a market leader. God doesn't want you to be a market bleeder. God wants you to come out the other side victorious. If you're a pastor listening to this today, God wants you to have a church that sets the pace in your city, that affects the community, that is a, a beacon of hope and light, a lighthouse to that city affecting that community, leading in the marketplace, knowing what to do, how to disciple people, how to grow the church, how to raise finances, how to be a great man and woman of God, how to rightly divide the word of truth, how to preach better sermons, how to have a, a church that's effective. God wants you to know all those things, being a person of understanding. So I want to say to you again today, don't camp at the place of your circumstances now, thinking that your circumstances are your destiny, because I want to say to you today that they're not. Your circumstance is not your destiny. Circumstances change like the weather. So today it's raining, tomorrow it's shining, today it's windy, tomorrow it's calm. That changes every 24 hours. But God's word, God's promise, God's will for your life does not. So I'm not man that I should lie. I'm not Miss Phillips that tells Peter Daniels you'll never amount to anything. So today I want to say to you, cast off those labels. Whatever people have labeled you, I want to say to you what God has said about you. God has said what? You are the head and not the tail. You are above and not beneath. God said that through Christ Jesus, you've been made alive together with him. You're seated in heavenly places with Christ. You are a co-laborer with Jesus. The Bible says that the blood of Jesus has what? It's not covered your sin. It's canceled your sin. And God is a God that is for you. He's not against you. The Bible said that God will never leave us nor forsake us. These are some of the promises you have to grab hold of and start to believe them and start to confess them and start to see them, visualize them, start to say, hey, my God's not out to punish me. God is not punishing you because you're going through a financial dip or God's trying to bankrupt you to teach you a lesson. No, sometimes we just don't have enough information. Sometimes we just aren't acquiring wise counsel. Sometimes we just aren't reading. We're lazy learners. We, we're waiting for God to send a lightning bolt out of heaven, and God didn't. He gave you common sense. He gave you a brain. He gave you opportunity. He gave you an opportunity to wake up in the morning and decide how you're going to approach the day. And I say to you again today, get mentorship, read books. I'm telling you the story about a man called Peter Daniels who is not my savior, but he's a mentor in my life that none of you might ever have met. And I've never personally met him, but I've met him through books. And I actually had the opportunity I bought one of his courses many years ago, and he phones everybody who buys the course 
So I did actually speak to him for a, a few minutes from Australia, and that was a privilege at that time in my life. But I say this to you, that you can meet people in books, they can inspire your life that you've never met before. I mean, look at us as Christians. I mean, we serve Jesus Christ. We never personally met him. Now we get to know him through the revelation and the relationship with the Holy Spirit, and he reveals Jesus to us. And one day, the Bible says, when we are absent from the body, we'll be present with the Lord. So one day we're going to meet Jesus personally, but right now we walk by faith. So you don't always have to know or have met the author of the book personally. You can be inspired by people overseas on Instagram or YouTube or as long as they're feeding you nutritious counsel that can help you. So I encourage you, we acquire wise counsel through mentors. And then secondly, we acquire wise counsel through books. We read. One of the greatest books that I can refer you to read is called The Bible. It's a great book to read. It's not a doorstop. And I say that lightheartedly because sometimes we think I've got to read everything else but the Word of God. Well, the Bible says the Word of God is living, Hebrews chapter 4. And the Bible says that the Word of God is living and powerful, more, more powerful than a two-edged sword. It's more powerful than a, a sword with both sides of the blade that are sharp and able to cut through and rightly divide and discern the, the thoughts and the intents of the heart. So sometimes when you want to make a decision, sometimes a fear grip decision, the Word of God comes and it says to you, no. He has a faith statement and suddenly your heart goes from a place of anxiety to a place of peace because you've allowed yourself to look into the word of God and the word of God is living. It's not something that is a dead letter. It's a living word because the Bible said Jesus was the word. In the beginning was the word. The word was with God and the word was God, John chapter 1. And the word became flesh and dwelt among us and we beheld his glory. So the physical word came to the earth or the spiritual word Christ in the beginning came to the earth in physicality and manifested to us through our Bible's gospel stories, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John in the New Testament. But then the Bible says he then died, rose, ascended, and is now seated at the right hand of the Father. And now he sent us the Holy Spirit. And with the Holy Spirit in us, he now reveals that word to us, the rhema word. He reveals it to us. So as a businessman, it's critical that you are a, a, a reader of your Bible, not just self-help books. Self-help books are great when it comes to the basic attributes of understanding your financial statements or understanding the latest marketing trends or understanding AI or chat GPT or whatever. I said the other day, chat GTP, and my, my family said, it's not GTP, it's GPT. I said, GT, whatever, GPPPT, TPPT, I don't know all these acronyms, whatever that might be. I don't even know what it stands for. But these things are affecting the times we're living in, and you need to have an understanding of the times, not to fear it, but to, to understand it. And if you understand it, you'll know what to do. And in knowing what to do, incredible opportunities open up. And so I want to say to you today, part of the Word of God is to guide you with the help of the Holy Spirit. Listen to what John 8.31 says, If you hear my voice and you abide in my word, you are truly my disciples and you will know the truth and the truth will give you freedom. There it is. The truth will set you free. The truth will tell you and help you to know what to do. So that is incredibly important that you read the Word of God as a book. But also, as I said earlier, to read the words of authors of books. So the Bible says, I'm the Alpha and the Omega. I'm the author and the finisher of your faith. So that's from the Word of God. But when it comes to a, a physical book, I always say to people, it's, I might sound very repetitive or very you know, mundane saying, I've heard you say this before, but are we actually applying it? Because a book can cost you 300 rand or 500 rand in our currency terms, whatever currency you, you operate in, could be $10 or $20 or 20 pounds or 15 pounds or whatever it is you purchase your, your books in. But bankruptcy is a lot more expensive. Debt is a lot more expensive when it comes to not knowing what to do. And so sometimes we think to ourselves, I need legal counsel, sometimes a lot more expensive as opposed to just spending 300 rand or 500 rand or $20 on your brain. And when you actually read it and take some time, 10 pages a day, that's how you read a book in a month. You read 10 pages a day, you buy out 15 minutes of your day, you get a pen and a highlighter and you start and you read 10 pages. And, you, and if you love it, you won't stop at 10, you might go further. But if you just do 10 a day, you can do 300 pages a month. And if you put an alarm on your phone on the Prosper Clock app and you'll say 10 pages a day 
and if you start to say statements like recording to your prospect log app, leaders are readers, readers are learners, and learners are earners. There is a good statement for you to start out with. You need to personalize that and say, Aiden, today you are going to read 10 pages a day because you are a leader that reads. And a reader that leads is a reader that learns and a reader that starts to earn. And you're going to start to earn. Why? Because you're going to know more than the opposition. You're going to know more than somebody else. Because the sons of Issachar had an understanding of the times and they knew what to do. The only reason why someone makes more money than you is because they know something you don't know. The only reason why someone is further ahead of you is because maybe, well, besides the fact that they might be older than you, but the fact that somebody in your own sphere of business, your own business sector, might be doing better than you is because they know something you might not know. Now, I don't say you should go into competition with, with your opposition because the Bible said he who compares himself and measures himself amongst himself is not wise. But I want to say to you that it's important that you stay on the cutting edge of keeping up with the understanding of the times, and then you'll know what to do. And when you know what to do, and the Holy Spirit takes the, the physical stuff you read out of a book, and you start to apply it, the Holy Spirit then says, no, yes, uh, it gives you peace, quickens you, slows you down. That's what part of the Holy Spirit's purpose is. Suddenly, that door opens, bam, that door, that door shuts, whatever it might be. And you start to see breakthrough, you start to see supernatural acceleration which is our theme for this year as, as a movement in CRC. And so I say to you today, the words of, of authors, you have to spend some money on a book. And if you read 10 pages a day, it's a start. I wrote a book called Born to Prosper, and I'm not ashamed to tell you to read it because it's got a lot of content in it. I spoke to a, a young business guy recently who has got a mentor, and he says he went to this mentor, and the mentor, he said to the guy, you know, I need some advice on this. And the first thing the guy said to him, have you read Pastor Aiden's book, Born to Prosper? And he said, I started, but I haven't finished. He says, he says read it. So he says, yes, I, no, I will. He said, but I want to ask you a question. He said, read it. And this man wouldn't answer his questions. He said to him, because everything you are going to ask me is in this book. So I don't say everything, but I say his challenge to this young businessman was go and read the book. And I, I'm often like that. I People come to me for counsel spiritually from my business background. They might ask me some business advice. And I often say to them, go and read this book, not mine, but a book. And then once you've read a book, you remember, read where you bleed. So you're either a market leader or you're a market bleeder. So if you're bleeding and hemorrhaging, you have to read where you bleed. And reading will be the tourniquet that's going to close or stop that hemorrhaging so seeking knocking and asking is the tourniquet that stops that hemorrhaging and then when you stop that hemorrhaging you heal and over time it forms a scar which is a reminder of the the pain of the past and then you move on you recover and you get back to full strength and you even go into overflow but sometimes when we bleed we think well that's it so i say to you get a good book that's going to help you not a novel of some romance novel i'm talking about a book that when you apply that book that knowledge to your life from the book it will help you to show an upward mobilization of your income remember peter daniels my mentor made the statement which is my sort of life statement to business people and to young leaders and to ever is that what have you read in the last six months that once you've read it and applied it to your life will show an upward forward mobilization of your income you can ask me that at three in the morning i'll repeat it to you what have you read in the last six months that once you've read it and applied it to your life will show an upward forward mobilization of your income. Now I say this to you today because I want to really continue challenging you to say to you, are you a market leader or a market bleeder? Because based upon what you are reading is going to determine how you're going to be leading. So if you're reading, you can lead. If you learn, you can earn. And your challenges can be minimized or alleviated in many ways never going to be permanently alleviated because jesus said in this lifetime you'll be challenged but be of good cheer i've overcome the world and so notice what proverbs says in proverbs 23 23 the bible says what buy the truth and sell it not not only that but also get discernment and judgment instruction and understanding there it is so buy the truth now we know spiritually Jesus said, I am the way, I am the truth, I am the life. So there's no man can go to heaven outside of that doorway of Christ. So he's the way, he's the truth, he's the life. Once you've made that decision and you've accepted Christ into your heart, 
that doorway is open. You have in and, but the Bible says you have you go in and out and you have pasture. So we at one with God, we had peace with God. That's settled. But now we can't buy salvation. So we can't buy the truth of Christ. We have to believe in the, the shed blood of Christ at Calvary, confess with our mouth. That's how we get spiritual salvation. But physical, natural information in your business, the Bible says buy the truth. So go and buy a, a book. Like I said, the book I wrote, Born to Prosper, it might cost you 300 rand, but you might get one nugget out of that, two nuggets out of that, whatever. That might just challenge you and trigger you and actually maybe answer some questions you're going through at the moment of your battle because that's what I've found throughout my life, what reading has done for me, is I just go, wow, I didn't see it from that angle. I never saw it from that perspective because the businessman who wrote the book has been through what I am going through and so when I learn it, I go, wow, let me go and apply it. Then I ask the Holy Spirit to give me wisdom to apply it. I then apply it into my life. And sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes it takes a day, a week, a month. It's not always instant. But if I am a lazy learner and I'm depending on yesterday's or last year or in our case, even pre-COVID strategies or systems or whatever it might be, it could be outdated already. And that's why you're feeling so frustrated. So he says what? He says, buy the truth, Proverbs 23, 23. Buy the truth and sell it not, meaning turn it into a, a workable product that can make you money. But he's saying once you own that truth, you've bought it, hold it. It's yours. The revelation is yours. And then apply it and watch. It's going to bring change. Because the only reason why you are frustrated is because you don't know what to do. and Or you've run out of information and you've got to get new information. And then he says, when you buy that truth, he says, get discernment. How do we discern how to use that truth? Get judgment, have good judgment, sound judgment, how to have instruction and understanding. Remember, the sons of Issachar had an understanding of the times and they knew what to do. But the Bible says when you buy the truth, when you buy a book, when you read, when you bleed, when you are struggling, the Bible says that get, you get discernment, judgment, instruction, understanding. We acquire wise counsel, the Bible says. And then secondly, he says acquire the skill. So not only do we get acquire wise counsel through reading the scripture verse and reading books, but we also have to acquire the skill. And so you have to, to steer your course wisely. You have to know something, be able to do something. You can't just hit and hope all the time. You have to be able to be skillful. And Peter Daniels always made the statement, skill yourself, don't kill yourself. And the difference between killing and skilling in the marketplace especially is that letter S. And that letter S is seek. So Jesus said what? Seek, knock, and ask, and you will find. So if you seek through reading 10 pages a day and you knock, sometimes on the YouTube channel, and those doors will be open. Understanding comes. Go and en en enroll in a free course online and acquire a skill or go and learn a new trade or whatever it might be. But as you skill yourself, you won't kill yourself. Many people are killing themselves out there, grinding and trying to make ends meet and burning the candle on both ends. And sure, there's always a price to pay, but then there must come that breakthrough where the dam wall breaks and now it becomes a, a river and a flow. And that's what makes many successful people successful is they've learned how to create pipelines and not just carry buckets when it comes to income. So notice what Ecclesiastes 10.10 10 says. The Bible says, if the axe is dull and one does not sharpen the edge, then he must use more strength. But wisdom brings success. So notice what he says. If the axe is dull, and one does not sharpen the edge. So ever try to chop down a tree with a blunt axe? Well, we know it's hard to do. But the Bible says if the axe is dull and one does not sharpen the axe, he must use more strength. And many people are exhausted. They, they're facing burnout, depression, suicidal tendencies, wanting to go into meltdown. And I don't say that lightly or critically today. I say it because if we know what to do and we know how to navigate the path through the help of the Holy Spirit and through information, we can alleviate pressure and we can start to see income, money flowing into our lives because the Bible is very clear. Money answers all things. You can't pay your bills with prayer. You can't go to a restaurant, eat a meal and say, well, I want to just pay you with prayer or I want to pay you with hope. You can't move forward. You can't buy property or buy a house without having money. And the Bible says money answers all things. But Jesus also says money is the least. So money is not the most important, but our economic system trades on money. And most marriages, most business relationships are strained because of the lack of money. 
Things are changing. Systems are changing. Times are changing. The, the sons of Issachar had an understanding of the times and they knew what to do. And the only reason why your invoices will be less is because your voice is no longer powerful enough to send an invoice. An invoice is an inventory of your voice. In other words, this is what you phoned me for. This is what you contacted me for. This is what I, I did for you. This is the service I rendered to you. And I spent so many hours or I installed so many products or I, whatever it is that you do. And when you are finished offering a, a solution to that person's challenge, you then are able to send an invoice because it's an inventory of your voice. That's what an invoice is. But if you're unable to add value, unable to solve problems because you've lost value in the marketplace, people aren't phoning you like they used to phone you because they don't. They found something better. They've found, they found something easier. They've found something more convenient or they found something cheaper, whatever it might be. Or they found somebody that offers better service because your customer service is bad or whatever it might be. And I say this to you because then you suddenly find I'm unable to invoice people. I'm, my invoices are are drying up. Therefore, when my invoices dry up, my cash flow dries up. And when my cash flow dries up, my, my pressure mounts. And so we have this vicious cycle. And then people sadly start going to corrupt business deals or deals under the table or fraud, or they have to start to lie and cheat and steal in order to try and make ends meet. And that's never a good solution in any shape, form or size. But if you start to sharpen your ax, and how do you sharpen your ax? You read 10 pages a day. You skillfully start to become skillful. And as you're skillful, you cut through all of the, the chase. You cut to the chase and you get to the jugular and you bring down that Goliath of poverty. You bring down that Goliath of frustration. You bring down that, that Goliath and then you chop off its head and you grab its head and you hold it up and you say, that's how you get ahead in life. Amen. So another one of my jokes, my children think is very repetitive and cringe, but I think it's hilarious. That's how David got ahead in life. He chopped off the head of Goliath. And what Goliath do you have to bring down in your life today? Is it the Goliath of what? Excuses, the Goliath of frustration, the Goliath of fear, the Goliath of cash flow, debt, chaos in your in your business. No, your books haven't been done for five, six years. You, you've got SARS or tax bills that are catching up on you because you're just robbing Peter to pay Paul. You're avoiding your reality because you're under pressure. And that's what pressure does. It makes us avoid our reality. And so I say to you, I've got the same pressure as you. Every person out there in the marketplace has got the same pressure as you. But it's how much we choose to skill ourselves, how much we choose to sharpen our axes. And then finally, Proverbs 22, 29 says, Do you see a man that is diligent and skillful in his business? He will stand before kings. He will not stand before obscure men. Listen to the promise of the word. So when you see a man who is skilling himself, or a woman who is skilling herself, when your axe is sharp and when your your skill is sharp and you're able to see things, discernment, you can discern your client's problems, you can offer great service, you can see where the market's moving, you can shift with times, you can adjust, you can let go, you can add, you can, whatever it might be. Because remember what the Bible says? The Bible said what? The Bible said, buy the truth and sell it not. Not only that, but get discernment. That's what reading will do walking with the Holy Spirit, reading the Word of God, it'll start to bring you discernment. I can discern the times. I can know by reason of use what is right, what's wrong, what's good, what's bad. Almost know. I have a, in the world, they speak about a gut feeling. In the kingdom of God, we speak about an unction of the Holy Ghost. So we have an unction. I know what to do because I abide in the Word. I'm a student of life. I'm a student in life. I, I never stand still. I'm not you know, getting to a point of I've got a degree and now I'm finished. No, that's, that was one of the stepping stones on the journey towards. Because if you're going to stand still in this modern world, in this in this world that is moving at a, at a rapid rate, you are going to just become more and more frustrated. And what's going to happen is we're then going to start to think, well, I'm just going to bleed out. I'm just going to hemorrhage out and I'll just start to say, well, it wasn't God's will. Well, I want to say to you, it might not be God's will and God will guide you in that, but you don't have to go bankrupt in order to discover God's will. You don't have to lose out in order to discover God's will. Because I have come, John 10, 10, that you might have life and that you might have it more abundantly. Amen. So are you ready to lead more than before? Are you ready to stop your bleeding? Because are you a market leader or are you a market bleeder? I want to say to you right now, God wants you to lead. He wants you to be the head and not the tail, above and not beneath. So come on, wonderful child of God. Come on, businessman. I want to say to you, I want to encourage you today. I want to leave you with an encouragement in your heart. Don't 
back down. Don't look back. Forgetting which is behind, says Paul the Apostle, Philippians chapter 3. And pressing on to what lies ahead, to the upward call that's in Christ Jesus. Come on. Not that I have already attained, says Paul. Not that I am being perfected. I haven't got to where I want to be. But thank God I'm not where I used to be. I am super excited. And I'm encouraging you today to say to you, push, believe, walk by faith. Don't stop now. Amen. As you wise up, you will rise up. And as you rise up, you are going to dominate that market space. And God is going to bless you and continue blessing you. And you're going to look back and say, wow, I'm so grateful that I was challenged not to stand still or to camp at that place of mediocrity, but I moved forward. And as I took that step, even though I wasn't always certain, as I got into that book 10 pages a day, I started to ask the Holy Spirit for discernment. Watch what is going to happen. Come on, have an incredible, incredible, incredible month. And I can't wait to be with you in episode 13 in our next episode of Leader Breeder. Have an amazing, amazing week. If you found value in this episode, come on, be so kind as to share it with a friend and tell a friend, hey, I'm learning so much on the Leader Breeder platform and I'll be so grateful for you to, to share that with people to help them. It's free. So if you haven't got a copy of the Born to Prosper book or you haven't read the Daily Devotional or you haven't got your Prospect Log app or you haven't been to IamBornToProsper.com or to LeaderBreederWorld.com, come on, make use of all of these free resource platforms simply here to help you become the best version, the better leader than you've ever been before. And God is with you. God is for you. Have an amazing week. Amazing month. Can't wait to be with you soon. Be blessed in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for joining us here at Leader Breeder. Make sure to subscribe to the channel to catch the next episode every month.